All right, welcome everyone to uh, my presentation on cybersecurity tips for online shopping. My name is George Dillman, and I'm the Consumer Outreach Specialist with the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities. So, first of all, what is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is keeping everything you do on the internet safe so that no one can steal your information for their own gain. I think we all know that, and it doesn't hurt to, to review it. Here's the statistic. More than two out of three, or 71% of shoppers, did most of their holiday shopping online in, in 2020. Now, we know why. I mean, with, with the pandemic, a lot more people. But even prior to the pandemic, you think about it. Uh, how many brick-and-mortar stores, uh, uh, chain stores out there were, were having some, some problems? Because more and more people were going online, doing their shopping online. So, you know, the pandemic aside, I think we see that just continuing to increase. Guess who knows this? Our friendly cyber criminals. So we got to be extra careful. This is what we're going to be talking about today. General cybersecurity tips and safety. Also, things related to shopping and research, comparisons, payments, records. So, we first want to start with a, with, a, with a clean slate. We want to use the most recent versions of browsers and operating systems. We want to keep our antivirus and other software up to date as well. As these things start to age, they become easier for cyber criminals to break into, crack the code, whatever it is. It gets easier for them to, to get into our systems, so we need to keep them updated on a regular basis. Uh, sometimes we can set up automatic updates, and many times we can at least get alerts telling us that these updates are available. And when they are, we need to update them as they are available. All right, we're going to talk about password do's and don'ts. We're going to talk about password don'ts first. On this slide, is a password that's still commonly used, no matter how many times we're told not to use this as our password. Uh, what is it? It's password or password one. And even other things like QWERTY, which is the top row of keys on the keyboard, ABC123, sequential numbers. We want to stay away from those easily guessed passwords. Even things like, you know, names, birth dates, phrases, or other easily guessed words and phrases. And, 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 you know, that especially people that we know, know, if that makes sense. And here's the example that I always use. Say I have a cat at home, and my cat's name is Princess Fluffy. And I love my Princess Fluffy. I'm always taking photos of her, posting them to social media, bragging about her to all 6,000 of my social media friends. And I'm doing friends with the finger quotes. Because how many of us really have that many friends? A lot of these so-called friends, or at least some, of these so-called friends are cyber criminals looking to, to steal information, steal our information as well as other people on social media. I read articles all the time that says one of the places we tend to share more personal sensitive information than anywhere else is social media. And I guess it, again, guess who knows this? And the, the cyber criminals are going to prowl these social media sites looking for information that they, they could steal. They might even try to trick us into giving them this information. Here's the example I use. Somebody reaches out to me on social media. Hey, friend, how you doing? Hey, when's your birthday? How old are you? When's your birthday? When's your birthday? I want to send you one of those birthday e-cards. Okay, friend, here you go. Here's my, here's my date of birth. Now I just gave somebody who I re probably really don't know my date of birth. They already have my name. Good chance they have my address. A few more pieces of information. They, they, they could have enough to steal my identity and use it against me. So we really have to be careful. So bringing it back to the password, the last thing I want to use as my, as my password, since all 6,000 of my friends on social media know about her, is Princess Fluffy or Princess Fluffy 1. We also don't want to use the same password for, for multiple accounts. If we use the same password for every site that we go to and somebody figures out our password, no brainer there. Now they have our password for every site that we go to. We want to create a different password for every site that we go on. Keep track of them somehow, write them down, maybe keep a notebook. Password managers, a lot of times we can download a password manager to our computing device. 
Password managers will store, manage, and even create strong passwords for us. One expert, I was listening to an expert on, uh, on the uh, national radio program about a year or so ago, and he suggests that for the sites that we don't use on a regular basis, that maybe we don't save passwords. He said, think about it. You know, the, the sites out there that we don't use, on, you know, a site that we go to maybe every three to six months. He said, those sites that we don't go to on a regular basis, don't even save the password. Create the password, use it as long as you need it, and then destroy it. Get rid of the password. Destroy it, shred it, whatever you need to do. Get rid of the password. And then say three to six months later, when you need to go back onto that site, you go and just create a new password again. You use the password, you're done using it, you get rid of it, and so on and so forth. That way, we don't have to keep track of all these passwords for those sites that we don't go, go to on, you know, regularly. We just, we just keep track of the ones we go to on a regular basis. And on the next slide, we're going to talk about uh, another reason why this is good to do that. So we're going to talk about password dues. First of all, the longer the better. Experts say that we should, uh, we should use uh, passwords that at, use at least 8 to 10 characters. At least 8 to 10, 10 characters. We want to use capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and even non-alphanumeric characters like pound signs and exclamation points. Some sites uh, won't allow you to create a password unless you use that, those combinations and those numbers of characters. Many sites, more and more sites that I'm going to now, um, uh, you, you, they're, they're at, at the very least, they're telling you how weak or how strong that password is as you're creating it, which is a good thing. Um, we want, we also, we want to change passwords, especially to our most vulnerable accounts on a regular basis. Our email password might be the, uh, you know, might be the most important. You know, it, as these things hang out there, it gets easier for, for cyber criminals to figure it out, to figure them out, to get into them. So we need to change our passwords on a regular, on a regular basis. Going back to the, to those sites that we don't use on a regular basis. If we don't keep those passwords, that site that I go to every three to six months, every three to six months when I'm going there, I'm, I'm automatically changing that password to that site, as well as all the other sites that I don't save passwords for. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone in, in, uh, in doing that. All right, we want to research new websites. And we're talking about shopping. We're talking about online shopping. You know, especially sites where we're, we are going to be exchanging sensitive information. You know, I see that new uh, retail site. Might have a good deal, great deal. Big John's Big Discounts. Every day, everything 50% off. Come to our site and shop, shop, shop. Oh my God, you know, you go to the site and I shop, shop, shop. And oh, by the way, if you download Big John's Big Discounts uh, uh, app to your computing device, you're gonna get a $200 uh, discount on your first order. Oh my God, you know, I'm gonna oh, download, the, download the app. Only to find out, you do this, right? You, you shop, you give uh, Big John's big discounts, all your information, you, you, uh, you download their app, only to find out at a, at a later point, there is no Big John's big discounts. It's a fake website set up uh, by some cyber criminal just to steal information. Oh, and by downloading that app, Without knowing it, you may be downloading some malicious software to your uh, to your computing device that you don't even, don't even know that you're downloading. That might allow maybe allows that uh, cyber criminal to go in any time they want into your, into your computer and steal information from you. So we want to be careful with these news websites. Actual uh, case in point, uh, by the way, I uh, this this actually happened to me. Uh, I, I used to, and that's the key word, I used to go to this site, where uh, this website, where if you go to this site, you can shop, you can link to and shop all these different retail sites. A lot of the retail sites were well-known sites, but there were sites on there I, I wasn't aware of. And if you, if you link to those retail sites through this website, you got points, you could turn the points into prizes. Well, I assumed, <laughs> and we know what happens when you assume, I assume that this site screened out all of these retailers, even though they were all legitimate websites to shop. Well, apparently not. I'm on there, and there was a, uh, there was, I found a site that had the item that I wanted. Didn't recognize the site, but again, I, I, I assumed it was a legitimate site. It, you know, 
It was they were they were partnered with the basis. So I linked to their site, I find the item that I wanted, and lo and behold, not only did I find the item that I wanted, but I found it at a really good price. Wow, this is great, right? So I order order my item. Two weeks later, I get a phone call from the credit card company. Hello, Mr. Dillman, are you currently in Anchorage, Alaska, and did you buy someone flowers in Juneau, Alaska? No, I didn't, and I know the company you're calling about, or the, the the, yeah, the company you're, you're, the, you're calling about. It was a fake website that was created to steal information from people and to be able, to, in this case, to use. They used my credit card information to make other purchases. So uh, I, I, uh, I got, I've linked to their fraud department. I worked with, their, with the uh, credit card's fraud department to cancel the card, uh, get a new card issued, and, all, and to eliminate any charges on that uh, on that credit card that weren't mine, including those flowers. Apparently, I bought somebody in Juneau, Alaska. I hope uh, he or she appreciated them. Um, so it can happen. So that's why we want to. We come across a new site. We just don't assume it's a legitimate site. We want to check them out before before we use them. You know, Google ser search the name of the uh, uh, of the company online. And after you Google the name of the company, type in scams, complaints, or both, see if anything comes up. Check with the Better Business Bureau. Ask around. Check reviews. We want to make sure that these are, are legitimate sites before we, we go ahead and use them and give them our personal sensitive information. We also have to be careful with the copy, the copycat sites, the ones that look like legitimate sites that we go to. Many times, most I think most of the time, you go to these sites by linking to them. You know, maybe I see an ad on social media. Uh, I, and maybe I, I go to uh, the, the site that I like to shop is, is uh, bigboxretailer.com. Uh, I, I'm not only do I go to their site and shop a lot on their site, maybe I'm part of their shipping club. I get free shipping. I, I do all of my, my shipping through them. I, I order a lot through them. Um, and I'm on social media, I see this ad for BigBoxRetailer.com, today only. Almost like Big John's Big Discounts, right? Today only, uh, in, um, you know, in electronic, everything 50% uh, off in the electronics department. Come Hit the link, come to our site and shop, shop, shop. So I do that. I hit the link, I go to the site, there it is. I go to their, their site all the time. And I shop, 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 put things into the shopping cart. I go to check out. Uh, and I, or I check out, I give them all my information, once again, only to find out at a later point that it wasn't the actual site that I was at. I went to a copycat site. But George, it looked like the site. I go to their site all the time. The name, the logo, everything, all the information was there. Very easy in this day and age, very easy to copy and paste and Photoshop things to make it look like you're actually on a legitimate, uh, a legitimate, web, or, you know, that, that tried and true website that you go to on a regular basis. So we got to be careful. How can we avoid that? Maybe go directly to that website with the, with the address that you have for it, as opposed to hitting a link and going there uh, uh, with that link. Oh, by the way, just like downloading that app, by hitting that link, I may, may be releasing some malicious software, getting downloaded to my computing device that I don't know about. Uh, by doing that, so we got to be careful with hitting those links, downloading those apps, opening attachments. So, but yeah, maybe we, we go directly to our, our favorite uh, retail website with the address that we have for that site as opposed to going another way. So that we, we know we're on, the, we're on the site. Something else that we can do is something called the hovering technique. What you do is you take your arrow. On my computer, I have my mouse. I place my arrow over top. That's if you do have that, by the way. If you don't, you gotta do, do something else. But I place my arrow over top of the web address of the site. I don't click on it, I just, I just hover over it with the arrow. When I do that, a box will pop up. It, where it says in the web address, where, it's, where it says that I'm, I'm at, www.bigboxretailer.com, in that box that pops up, it'll tell me where I'm actually at. Because that could be fake. That could be a fake web address. But in the box that pops up when I hover over it, it'll tell me where I'm actually at. Now, if I'm at bigboxretailer.com, it'll say www.bigboxretailer.com. But if I'm anywhere else, uh, www.scammersrs.com, uh, 
if I'm anywhere else, then, then I'm, not on, I'm not on that site. I'm on, I'm on another site. I'm on a, on a fake site in this scenario. So we, we want to be careful. We, if we can, if we have, you know, we're using a device where we have the mouse, we hover over it, and, and we can utilize that box as well. Same thing with email addresses. Maybe I get an email from a big box retailer about this great sale in, in electronics. Um, and promotions at bigboxretailer.com. And it's the same thing, you know, hit this link, go to our website, you know, shop in our, our electronics department, shop, 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 yada, yada, yada. And, and again, just like the web, the website, in this case, it's an email that I, that I got. I get emails from them all the time. It looks like the, the emails that I get from them. But again, very easy in this day and age to copy and paste and Photoshop things to make it look like a legitimate uh, email from a legitimate source. So we can do the same thing. We can hover over that email address. And again, you know, we play, put the arrow over top of the, of the email uh, address the, uh, where it says the email came from in the box that pops up. It'll tell us where the email actually came from. Again, I'm going to be silly, but Johnny Scammers at ScammersRUs.com. And I say that because really um, it's not going to be, the, the differences are probably going to be very slight, very subtle differences. So that it's still going to look like the actual source. And here's the example that I use with the email. Uh, you know, promotions at, at uh, bigboxretailer.com. And so I, I hover over it, the box pops up, and in the box it says promotions at bigboxretailer.com. Oh, wait a second. Oh, no. In the box that popped up, it says promotions at big-box.com. That one difference... That one extra dash is the difference from an e the email coming from a legitimate source or coming from a fake source. So that's what we're really looking out for, those slight, subtle differences. Or with the, uh, the web address, I go to the web address, the website for bigboxretailer.com, and I hover over it. And, it. and again, the box pops up, and it says www.bigboxretailer.com. Well, wait a second. In the box that pops up, a uh, box is spelled with a zero rather than an O. Again, that one slight subtle difference is the difference from actually being on the, on the website or being on a fake site. So we want to be careful with that. We want to be careful. All right, and this brings us to phishing emails and smishing text messages. Do you know the sender? Check for grammar and spelling. When in doubt, don't click it, delete it. There was a time, I think some of us, at least some of us can remember those a time when you'd get this email, supposedly from a legitimate source, and it looked like a third grader sent it. You know, everything's misspelled, and you know, um, I think uh, scammers have come a little long way since then. They're a little bit more, a little bit smarter, a little bit more sophisticated, and they're coming up with very good uh, emails that uh, you know that again look good and, 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 and appear to come from a legitimate source. You know, the, uh, that government agency that reaches out to us by email that needs information from us. Our local bank that needs to confirm you know, some information with us. Or in this case, big box retailers sends us that email from their promotions department. Uh, so we have to be careful. Check them out. Again, you know, the, the hovering technique, if we have the arrow, if we don't have the arrow, maybe reach out. Maybe reach out to that company. Maybe I reach out to big box retailer to their promotions department to see if they actually did send this email, you know, before I do anything with it. And we don't want to use, by the way, we don't want to use the number that could be in the email. We know where that's going to go to, if it is fake. <laughs> we, we want to, to research and, and, and use a verified number for that company, reach out to them to confirm whether we got this, they sent this email or not. Same thing with smishing with text messages. You get that, that text message, it looks like it's from a legitimate source. Um, what has been popular over the last two holiday periods, you know, uh, uh, you know, the end of year holidays, everybody doing a lot of shopping, doing a lot of shopping online. What has been popular with scammers over, over the least the last two years is you get that text message supposedly from FedEx, supposedly from UPS, supposedly from the U.S. Postal Service or Amazon or whoever. And um, this might go something like, something happened with your last order. Please hit this link. Go, go to this page. We're going to need all your information again. And just like with the email, you hit the link. You go, you go to that page. You give, them the, you give them your information only to find out at a later point it was, it was a fake text message from a, from a fake source. 
Um, so, and, and just like with the emails, how do we, how can we have a company call? Maybe I call FedEx. You know, now, if I haven't ordered anything, I, I got a couple of those text messages, and I know I didn't order anything through that source. So I, I knew it was fake. So if we know it's fake, then maybe just delete it. Maybe, maybe we, we want to report it to them, reach out to them and report it to them that somebody's doing this. Um, but we can certainly call. If we're not sure, maybe we reach out with a, with a verified number. Again, if there's a phone number in the text message, I don't want to use that. We know where that could go. I want to reach out with a verified number to that entity before I do anything with it. And like I said, if you know it's legit, just, you know, just, uh, or it's not legit, just delete it. You know, don't, and don't click on anything. Because again, we've got to be careful with clicking the, those, those links, attachments. Uh, you know, I get a, a letter from a, a friend of mine. Hey, uh, hey, George, uh, you know, my friend Joe sends me this letter. Hey, George, how, how you doing? Hey, I wrote this letter to the electric company. Um, before I send it, can you do me a favor, read it over, make sure everything looks good? Open up the attached letter. So I want to help my buddy Joe out. It's a Word, a Word document. I open up the attachment, review the letter, not knowing that somebody hacked into my buddy Joe's email, uh, email contact, uh, in, in, into his email account, got his entire email contact list, and everybody on the contact list got this, uh, got this email with this, atta uh, this attachment. And again, just like with downloading that app or hitting that link, by opening up that attachment, they're releasing some nasty uh, malicious software that gets downloaded to their computing device. So we've got to be careful. All right, comparison uh, policies. First of all, you know, we're, we're, we're shopping, we're shopping on, online, and, and as at least some of us know, we've come a long way from the day, especially with big t ticket items, from going from location to location to location, doing comparison shopping. I remember that, you know, a couple times looking for that next new television, or whatever, whatever the big ticket item was, and going from this retailer to that big box retailer to this retailer, you know, comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, getting uh, the, the best product at the best price with the best warranty and, and coverage and so on and so forth. So now, as, as we all know, that's probably one of the reasons why online shopping is taking off so much because we can do this all online, click of a button, and we can, we can compare, you know, prices, uh, discounts, sales prices, we, you know, we, we just want to make, confirm this with the companies, be, you know, as we're doing, maybe if we can get something in writing from them, keep track of everything, you know, so when I get that receipt, you know, maybe Big, Big John's Big Discounts is a legitimate website, you know, every day, everything 50% off, and I order three or four items through Big John's Big Discounts, and, 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 it tells me I'm going to get uh, get all these four all four of these items at, at a 50% discount off regular price. I get my uh, my statement uh, uh, at at some point, and on the statement, maybe I don't even check the statement. I see that the you know the uh, the what I owe at the bottom on the credit card, and I I, I pay the bill. Or maybe I take a, a, a look at that, and I'm keeping track of, of what the, what I was supposed to pay, and and the price is different on there. Wait a second! They didn't take fifty percent off. They only took. So we want to keep a hold of keep a hold of receipts. Keep a hold of you know. If I go, if I do it, get a price match. Now, again, uh, I like to work with big box retailer. I'm in their their uh, shipping club. I get free shipping, and they have a new television that I want. But I also know that ABC uh, retailer and XYZ retailer have that same television at a, on a, uh, at the same price, but it's on sale right now. $200 discount off that television. Maybe I reach out to a big box retailer, talk to their customer service department, I get a price match on that. Maybe what I want to do is get that in writing and keep track of that. So again, when the bill comes in, comes time to pay the bill, I take, oh, wait a second. Man, they, they charged me a regular price. They didn't give me, they, they didn't give me that discounted price they promised me. I can reach out to them. I even have that email as a, as a confirm, you know, from say Susie and their customer service department. Susie and Custer here, let me send you the email back. Let me confirm. So, you know, keep track of everything as we go along. And take it, certainly take advantage of price matching, you know, the, the, uh, um, you know, the, the discounts, uh, guarantees. You know, keep note of all of that. Com compare back and forth. But also, we want to compare privacy policies. We want to, we want to look at a company's privacy policy. Companies' privacy policies, 
they basically tell us, first of all, what information they're collecting from us. Review their privacy policy. See what information they're collecting from you. Most of it is going to be standard, but if they're looking for something in addition, you know, gee, why are they asking for my social security number, date of birth? Maybe that's another sign that, that, that something is, uh, is a little hokey here. But privacy policy will tell you what information they collect, uh, basically how they collect your information, how they store it, and, and how securely they keep your information, and whether or not they're selling your information to third parties or not. A lot of companies will have their privacy policy in a place where you can, you can access it, you can review it. Uh, in some cases, you may have to look for it. And if you, if you really have to look for it, and or if you can't find it, maybe that's a red flag that goes up. But, but compare those privacy policies, too. Let's see how securely they're keeping our information when, when, they, when we give it to them. Now, on that note, this is part of an, of an actual email that I got from, from, again, what I'll call big box retailer. I saw this at the bottom of the email, I thought, wow, all of this is just great information that I need to share in this presentation. And right at the top, it says, Big Box Retailer protects your security and privacy. We will never ask for personal information, such as passwords or credit card numbers, in an email. If you receive such a request, please do not respond. They're telling us that there are scammers out there that will copy their emails, make it look like it came from big box retailer or whoever, and, 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 and pretending to be the, asking us for personal sensitive information. So they're telling us if we receive such an email, it didn't come from them. <laughs> it came from another resource, a resource. Don't respond to it. And maybe what we want to do is reach out to big box retail and report it to them, let them know that somebody is doing this. So they're telling us right there that there are scammers out there faking uh, emails, you know, name, company name, logo, everything looks good. They'll fake and send us a, a fake email. It goes on to say, learn more about, on, uh, about online safety and see our privacy policy by hitting that link. That right there tells me they, they have their privacy policy right there for us to hit, hit a link and go to, to, uh, to, to check it out. Uh, that right, again, that right there tells me that they have a, a safe, sound, very secure privacy policy. And I did go and check it out. Uh, and, and, the, and it is. It, it is. It's very good. So right there, as opposed to hiding it someplace and wondering why they, they, they've hidden it, um, you know, what's, what's going on. Finally, down at the bottom is the date. That date can be important as well. Now, when I did this uh, slide, I did this slide last year, so as... As of, of uh, you know, this slide, that when I got this email, 2021 was the latest date. That date, and I say that because that date at the bottom of a, of a website, in this case at the bottom of their email, essentially tells us the last time their website was, was uh, updated, probably including security to their site. So if we see an older date on there, we want, maybe we want to tread softly and be careful with what, what and how much information we share with them. Because just like our devices, I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, that we want to keep our uh, devices updated on a regular basis. They need to keep theirs updated on a regular basis as well. And if, if not, again, we've got to be careful. I've been on a few. I was on two, two sites last year. One of the sites that had older dates. One of those sites had 2016. That told me at, at, that, at that date, at that time, the last time they had updated their, their site was five years ago. It was five years prior. I think a lot has changed in five years. Uh, so, again, check out that date at the bottom. Most of them should be up to date. Um, some now are actually doing a date range, which is interesting. I'm seeing more and more date ranges. And, and with the last date being, being the... the uh, being the, the, the latest date. Again, that's telling me that it's now, it's the, you know, 2000, you know, 1996 to 2022, it's up to date. It's up to date, again, probably including security to their site. All right, before adding personal or payment information, check for a secure web page. HTTP versus HTTPS. Traditionally, and I'll come back and explain what I mean by traditionally. But traditionally, we go to a website. And on that site, in the web address, we, we, we would see HTTP.